In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. In the Holy Church this week, the Sunday is known as Gaudete, Latin for rejoice, the first word in the introit. Rejoice, the scriptures say. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And on this Rose Sunday, so we shall. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading for the third Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest, 
with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In what can only be deemed a miracle, the prophet Isaiah had a vision of Christmas centuries before it occurred. Arise, shine, the prophet proclaimed, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It was as if the prophet were speaking directly to those shepherds of old, out keeping watch over their flock by night. Jesus, the light of the world, had been born in Bethlehem, and over fields nearby the sky was filled with angelic brilliance. And so not surprisingly, those shepherds did precisely what the prophet had directed them to do. They arose and went with haste to see this thing which had come to pass. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It's what Christmas is all about. For Jesus is still very much the light of the world, and he shines upon us just as he did those shepherds of old, shines upon us to this very day. And so we too are compelled to do as the prophet said, to arise and take note and to see it for ourselves over and over again, to see and experience this marvelous thing which has come to pass. Ah, but there's a problem. For you see, lurking around in this world of ours is one who has the capacity to disguise himself as an angel of light. The Bible teaches us that Satan is always hard at work trying to deceive us into thinking that his darkness is actually light and that we don't need to rely upon that light born in Bethlehem long ago. Satan began his dastardly work early on. History had barely begun and there he was pretending to be such an enlightening figure, thereby seducing Eve into thinking that she could be just like God. I mean, all she had to do was choose what 
seemed to be most advantageous and pleasing to herself. Scripture records, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. Things hadn't changed any when centuries later St. Paul was living in the Greco-Roman world, which at the time seemed to know it all, what with its illustrative philosophy and sophistication. But oh no, the apostle objected. Human beings are not ultimately superior, and they don't have the final say. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, the apostle teaches, let him become a fool in order that he may become wise. That tells us something, doesn't it? That wise by worldly standards does not always mean wise by godly standards. Well, the centuries flew by, and that disguised angel of light up the ante. He transformed for many the blessings of what history calls the Enlightenment, he transformed those blessings into a deceptive abyss. Now mind you, the Enlightenment was the result of God's gracious maneuverings in this world of ours. By the grace of God, we are so much better off in terms of convenience and comfort than any generation before us, with the result that I suspect that very few of us would choose to revert back to a pre-scientific world. God is good, good indeed, to allow us to maximize the benefits of human reason and autonomy. Even within my own lifetime, I have seen that the advancement of God, which he has allowed us to make because of the benefits of human reasoning and autonomy to make better our day-to-day -day living, that those advancements are simply mind-boggling. Abadeo, as he always does, our arch enemy invades God's goodness like a worm in an apple and tries to spoil everything. Under satanic deception, some now begin to believe that human beings are enlightened in all matters, that we are truly the masters of our fate and the captains of our soul, that we're smart enough to determine what's right and wrong, and that we can pretty much do whatever it is that we please, within reason, of course. And if that be the case, to the degree that that is the case, then who needs some baby born in Bethlehem ages ago claiming to be the light of the world? Well, that's the challenge we face this Christmas and every Christmas, to admit that in spite of all our enlightened ways, that God's light is vastly superior to our darkness, that God's word is wiser and more trustworthy than all human reason combined. That obedience to one greater than ourselves truly surpasses the shallow freedom of doing whatever it is we please. The truth is, clearly stated in sacred scripture and enfleshed for us in the one who was born light of the world, the truth is that earthly enlightenment has never been the equal of divine enlightenment. And so the timelessness, the relevance of Christmas never fades. It is always new. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Indeed, our light has come. God himself, incarnate in Jesus of Nazareth who, in the words of St. Paul, has become for us humans wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. 
hefty words indeed to underscore the marvelous blessings of the light. Now, having that light and all that he possesses, what more could we possibly want? So then, as St. Paul urges us, walk as children of light, for after all, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in him, Christ Jesus. Amen. We come to thee, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each with a little world unto ourselves, facing life and each day with needs and hopes different from all others around us. For some of us, this day begins joyfully, for others with heaviness of spirit. Some of us free from care and others full of worry. Some of us at the beginning of life with all sorts of choices and others at the end with few choices left. Speak to each of us according to our personal needs, we pray. And we pray for the world, for our country, our President Donald, our Governor Gregory, our Mayor Eric, for the Holy Church and our portion within her, for Matthew of St. Louis, our synodical president, Miguel de San Antonio, our Texas district president, for Eloy of Irving, our Aria de la Beta vice presidente, for Paul of Rockwall, our circuit visitor, for Johannes of Fort Worth, our mission and ministry facilitator. And indeed, we pray for all in need, whether in body or in soul, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. La bendición de Dios omnipotente, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con todos vosotros. And the benediction of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you siempre, always. Amen.